back for it once we have the place secured. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. something to say. Uh, what's that, Al? Ooh, I'm Alan Wake. I'm always right about everything. And if I don't get my way, I'll sulk all day <gasps> long. I'm always a dancing moody. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend, Barry, to carry me. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al! They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? Look at all this stuff. They must Sleep. have done okay for themselves. So but how come I never heard of these guys before? Dreams. <laughs> and this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Hey, remember when I got you that gig? Your first real writing job. What got you started? Was this one of your episodes? Nice. by someone else. Each of Mr. Jones explores the endless dreamscape, only to be brought to a sudden stop by a decidedly mundane situation. A long line of people. Hey, Jones, right? Listen, we're gonna have to wait until his finest over there is good and ready. Oh, wow, who's that? The Viking boat looked imposing, almost like a battering ram. Kids, please don't wait. Making the drops is hard work.
Wow! Those geezers had quite a production going on. Ooh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm gonna start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. <gasps> hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm gonna take a closer look at this stuff. Be careful, Al! open, okay? As you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deerfest is almost here, isn't it? I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Actually, Pat, we think we're real busy with this. Look at which concerns an ongoing investigation. I could see the building that had to be the Anderson's home on the other side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned-out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods.
Is that you out there, buddy? Yeah, it's me. Hey, let's go, man. I think we're gonna have to work together to open this gate now. It looks pretty heavy. Hey, I think that's the farm on the other side of the field. We're almost there. This farm is a crazy place for crazy people. We should feel right at home then. Come on, one more gig. Let's do this thing. downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. You know, this place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were in the booby hatch. Zane could feel the poems taking form. Can you hear that, Al? Music? Of course. We need to find where it's coming from. That's the message the Andersons talked about. That's the whole reason we're here. Lady of the Light? Oh, that's gotta be... What's your face? The crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right! Must be! Okay? We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey, Al. Lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry. This is... Yeah. What the hell? I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. If I just wanted to, I could write ten books a year. And and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What do they put in this stuff? I feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. I just miss her, Barry. I just want her here with me. I know, Al. I know. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay.
coming! It's all right! I'm coming! It was a crazy drunken dream, and yet it was more than that. It was the truth, a suppressed memory unearthed by the Anderson's moonshine. I was there, an out-of-body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls, the night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. Alice? I remember Alice. being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. I remembered thinking I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. <sighs> Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. Beyond this lost memory, there was nothing. I had to follow the footsteps of my past self to find out what had happened that night. I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice. and so she had me. Alice! I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me. Made me her puppet. She must be here somewhere. Maybe upstairs in the study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. Alice! You laugh at the whole thing together and put it Alice? behind you. She's not here. You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. You can write her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. I'll write. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zeng was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I will hear. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my heart a long time ago. She looks so old. I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. Cabin 
had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. It had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. There's an old town road with mystery of Tom the poet and his muse, and a magic lake which gave a light to the words the poet used. Now the muse she was his happiness and he reigned about her grace And told the stories of treasures deep beneath the blackened ways Till in the stillness of wonder and still in its misty crown The muse she went down to the lake and in the waves she drowned And now to see her love set free Silence deep beneath the lake. 